Yeah. Alright, so I've been meaning to do a, a wee video of this guitar that I picked up recently, but I just got sidetracked with some other stuff. Um, but, as you can see, it's another Mustang. Um, Squire have come out with some new FSR models. Um, I think there's a, a Daphne blue with an orange stripe on here, and you've got this one, which I really liked, is a black with a gold stripe on it. Um, I'm going to be upgrading this, I've actually got the upgrades here, um, so I won't be doing a, a sound review just quite yet until I get everything on it. Um, but so far what I've done is I've uh, sanded the neck as usual, because usually the necks feel just a wee bit kind of rough. Um, I conditioned the fretboard, polished the frets, so all that's been done so far. And I've also installed these Goto lock and tuners, which are really good, I put these in most of my guitars. Um, they do vintage style ones and modern sort of ones like these, which went better than this guitar. Um, so they're really good, sturdy. A um, couple of Goto string trees on there as well, replacing the butterfly ones that were on it. Um, I've also upgraded the knobs so far to these um, retro style knobs, which I think are really cool. And my next upgrades that I'm going to put on it tonight is this pick guard here to make it the HS configuration, which I prefer which is the Cobain configuration really, which will go on there. So I'll have the humbucker in a single coil in the neck. And it will be in the bridge, it's the Seymour Duncan Custom Hybrid Zebra Humbucker. And in the neck is just basically a cheap pickup that I picked up off Amazon because I don't use the neck a great deal on the Mustangs. Um, which is a, let me take it out, I only paid 10 pounds for this. Just a ceramic one. It's it'll do the job for all the, the amount of times that I use the neck. Come uh, the neck pick up on these guitars is, is very seldom, so I wasn't really want to spend much money. And I saw this on Amazon for ten pounds, and I thought, well, I'll try it. If I don't like it, I can always swap it out later for a, an iron gear or something similar. So it's actually a rails um, single coil humbucker pickup. It's single coil size, obviously, and that's going to go in the neck. Other than that, I'm putting a couple of new pots in there as well, and a new switch. So. Basically, everything hardware-wise just came off. I also put on a new bridge as well with Goto saddles. It's a top loader bridge because this is obviously not string through, but I actually prefer top loaders. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That's it. Set up, ready to go. As I say, a few of the upgrades are already on there. I'm going to put in the pickups, the new electrics, the new pick guard, get some strings on it, and then I'll do a wee sound review after that to see how it sounds. But um, just like normal, they need a wee bit of attention when you first get them. Um, it's really easy to get some sandpaper and sand the neck so it's nice and smooth. Sometimes people like to oil them, I've done that before. This time I didn't bother, I just sanded it. Uh, tuners are a, a definite upgrade, but I do that on all my guitars. I just prefer locking tuners. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get to work on it, get everything put in there, and uh, have a bit of fun with it. So I'll let you guys see what it's like when it's done, and it maybe give some other people a few ideas about upgrades they might want to do in theirs. Because... Um, these are a great base for modern, which is why I really like them. Uh, cheap, but once you put, I'll, I'll probably spend more than the guitar's worth itself again on upgrades, but it's worth it. You know, um, I like Mustangs, um, and your choice of Mustangs really is very few. You can get the expensive ones, and you can get obviously these cheaper Squire ones. You've got the classic vibe model as well, um, but they're just fun wee guitars, and I just I, I find it better just to buy the cheaper one, do the work that I need to do to it. Um, get the upgrades but on it and I've still got a really good gigable guitar for still no very much money. So I'm going to get to work um, and you'll see how it looks when I've done it. Okay. Okay, so a couple of days later than expected, um, I finally got this guitar finished. I was hoping to actually have the rest day on there the same night as I recorded the first part, but I ran into some trouble with the single coil sized rails pickup that I had for the neck. Um, it was a bit too wide to fit in the the neck single coil cut out on the, the pit guard. Um, so although it said on the listing that it was a single coil size rails humbucker, it's actually a bit bigger. Um, so that idea got scrapped. I looked on Amazon and I found, because I, I was, wasn't too worried about what pick up I put in the neck, because as I said before, I don't use it a great deal. Um, so I just got a standard single coil, basically a Strat single coil pick up, a Wilkinson one vintage voice that I'm actually really glad that I did because it sounds uh, superb, it's actually really really impressive for the price and again that was only £14 I think it was, um, but don't let that put you off because it actually sounds really nice. I don't think there's much point in me demoing this guitar because if you're thinking about getting one, 
I'm not that, me playing this is not going to tell you how it sounds because this now sounds completely different from it does when it's stock. But I'm just going to show you the upgrades that I did and um, what I did to improve the neck and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure most people who buy one of these are probably going to do some upgrades to it. So there it is. There, that's the the finished article. Um, the neck here and obviously the the tuners like I showed before. I'm sure. So um. What we've got here is the Seymour Duncan 59 Custom Hybrid in the bridge, which if you don't know what that is, it's you've got a Seymour Duncan pickup, it's called the Seymour Duncan 59, which is like a, a vintage voice humbucker, and a custom, uh, one, one coil for the custom uh, humbucker that I've got. Uh, apparently somebody who was a, a fan of Seymour Duncan pickups at one time uh, put those two coils together by themselves, and then Seymour Duncan started doing it as a, an actual um, model on the range. So it's got a kind of mixture of modern and sort of classic sounds. It works really well. It's the first time I've ever, ever actually tried one. Um, and it sounds it sounds really good. Um, and this one, as I say, is a single coil Wilkinson, basically a strat neck pickup. So I've got those two in there, just the standard three-way switch. So it's just that, um, then those two together, then that. I could add a push-pull for that, but Generally speaking, I'll just use a humbucker on the bridge anyway. Um, obviously, I had to buy the pit guard uh, on eBay, which is set out, obviously cut out for that configuration. Uh, some people maybe prefer to keep their Mustang dual humbucker, you know, but um, I just like having that single coil on the neck. And I actually just like how that looks as well compared to the two humbuckers. Um, on here is a, a bridge that I bought, which was from a place called Northwest Guitars in the UK. Um, that was only like fifteen pounds or something, uh, but I added Goto saddles, which were thirty eight pounds. Which, to be honest, I used to I never ever appreciated how much different saddles, good saddles, actually makes. But when you think about it, the strings are making contact with them, and that's um, taking the vibrations for the strings and resonating that into the body. And as I say, that this stuff to me before I used to think, can it really make that much difference? But when compared to the stock saddles that you get in these, it makes it really does make a big difference. Um, with your string sustaining things like that, I really did the, the first time I did it with one of the Mustangs before. I really noticed a big difference. I, I don't like the stock saddles that come with these guitars. The hardware on it is really is really pretty cheap and it's functional, but long term or if you're going to get the guitar, you you really need to think about changing it. In my opinion, anyway. Um, this is um, just. Um, sort of vintage style or um, retro style, sorry, uh, knobs that I bought that I just think look a bit cooler than the stock ones. Although the stock ones are fine, but I just I just like these knobs. I've got them in another guitar as well, and I just think they look cool. Um, so I've got them on there. I changed the pots to solid shaft alpha pots. Again, that's just a choice. The, the pots that come with it, you could actually use them for a long time and they'll be fine. Um, they're going to do nothing to your, the tone or anything like that, I don't find. Um, 500k, I think the stock ones that come on are 500k, but don't quote me on that. I never actually checked when I took them out. Um, but because I've got the humbucker in there, usually with a humbucker you'll have 500k pots, but um, I have seen guitars like this having 250k pots, even with the humbuckers. Um, so the the stock pick guard and stock pickups all come out. Um, the neck in particular, see when you first get these, you'll, you'll find when you feel the neck, it's, it's a satin feel, but it feels kind of unfinished when you first get it as if there's a kind of very mild roughness to the to the neck um to solve that all i did was get um 2000 grit sandpaper took the neck off and um, the tuners off and everything else and completely just rubbed the whole neck and um, with the 2000 grit sandpaper and it just gives it a much much nicer smooth finished feeling uh, much more like you would find on a mexican strat or a mexican telly or something just a nice satin but much more smoothed off. Um, I have uh, finished it off with boiled linseed oil before, some people do that, but when the last time I did that I really didn't find it was necessary because I finished it with the oil and then it still felt a wee bit kind of icky, so I would sand it again. So this time I just sanded it. What you will find is when you sand the neck, I found this, the times I've done this before as well, is that the, the squire deck, that's not deliberate in my part, I would leave the squire there, I don't mind. Um, but when you're sanding the neck, it starts to come away. So rather than just leave it sort of half on or faded, you just sand a wee bit more and it really comes away very, very easily. So that's not a deliberate thing in my part. I don't mind 
I'm quite happy for people to know this is a squire. It's got the squire uh, neck plate. I mean, I don't mind that one bit. I'm not trying to pass it off as something else. Um, but it will come off when you're sanding the neck, so it's no big deal. Um, and obviously, one of the most important things for me was decent tuners. And I just, you, you don't need to go for locking tuners like this. But I just find these so much easier. They're probably the most expensive upgrade, other than the the bridge pickup. Um, hardware wise, um, the most expensive upgrade I put on the guitar. These were like about seventy pounds. These tuners, but worth every single penny. And I kept all the stock hardware because in the unlikely event that I might sell this guitar if I get something, another Mustang that I think is better or something, I can just put all the old hardware back on it and sell it. Um, just as it would be for stock, but I'm not planning on doing that. But I keep it anyway, just in case, because you never know. So the, the pin lock and tuners on there, and the reason I find them better is just because when you pull the string through, you don't have to wind or anything like that, you just pull the string through, tighten it back and tune up, and that's it. And they're really stable, and they hold their tune really well. And the other wee small upgrade I did was the Goto um, string trees there, which are like a wee barrel type string trees rather than the butterfly ones, which just look a bit better as well. The other ones are fine. Um, but I just, I, I like these, I think they're just a bit neater looking, you can see them on there, there's some barrel ones. Um, so other than that, and what I did is I conditioned the fretboard as well. Um, there's this stuff that I use called uh, Monty's Guitar Food, which is like a kind of wax stuff that he sells. It's like £10 for this week and a jar of it, um, which you might think sounds expensive, but it'll last you for ages. Um, and you just put some of that up and down the, the fretboard and then just kind of buff it off, leave it on for a bit and then buff it off and it just gives it a nice smooth feeling and conditions, it takes any dryness of that away. Um, so it feels really super smooth. And obviously polish the frets, because when you first get one of these guitars, see if you go like that and bend the string, you'll hear like a scratchy sound. And it's just that they've not really been finished very well, just the same as the neck, they've not really been smoothed that well. So get this stuff called a micro mesh, you'll get it on Amazon as well probably, or eBay. Micro mesh um, fret polishing kit, and it's got really, really, really fine wee squares of this micro mesh sort of sandpaper type stuff. But it's more like a material, and you use a kind of rougher one to start with, and then go to the really fine one, and it polishes them up to a nice shine. And now, really smooth when I'm bending. And other than that, that's it. I mean, that's it now done. And I could quite easily gig this, be happy, and it'll be stable. It's going to sound good because the pickups sound great, and all in all, it's just a really, really good instrument now. Um, probably spent just over £200 in upgrades. It cost me £150 to buy the guitar, so more than the price of the guitar again. But all in all, 350 and I've got a really, really good Mustang, which sounds great, great hardware, feels great to play, and I'm really happy with it. So, as I say, there's no point in my demo in the sound, because uh, it's you know the one you get if you buy one, it's not going to sound anything like this unless you do exactly the same stuff. But in case anybody's thinking about upgrading, as I'm sure a lot of people will be, that's how I did it. Um, you might put in your own choice of pickups or whatever, but certainly with the neck, I think the information might come in handy for sanding the neck and things like that and how to get this sort of side of things feeling a bit better in the fretboard and the frets. So anyway, there you go. That's my latest guitar and my latest upgrades and that's how it looks. So hopefully you find that useful and let me know if any of you guys pick one of these up, whether it be the Daphne Blue one or one of the, the older versions, and let me know what um, upgrades you may have done to it. Um, so there you go. But I've got something going to be coming pretty soon, which is an RQ, actually an RQ Squire. Uh, they're not in stock here yet, but I'll have that feature soon, because I've got a couple of ideas for that one as well. But until next time, there you go. Catch you later.